Good evening. This the 20th meeting of the the 20th meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council is now called to order. I'm going to ask anyone to have a cell phone to please turn it off or put it on vibrate. Tonight's invocation will be led by Sharon Alicia. Did I say that right? Not quite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, last name is so. Charles. If everyone would please stand for the invocation, then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I am Sharon Alicia Childs, also known as Amatel Mava. It is my distinct honor and privilege to yield an invocation before this assembly. A special and heartfelt thanks to Councilman Ryan Dorsey for the invite. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sunshine in the morn with an impassioned display woven with the strength of a tapestry. We are solemn and trenchant in our works shaped with courage by your loving hands. Lord, we ask you to embody us with your principles and guide us with embrace on our journey. Lord, we are grateful for your direction and give thanks for keeping us whole and in your steed. Blessed we are by your abundance, by your deliverance. Dear Lord, may we walk with reverence at your mercy and carry your will as vessels of exchange for goodwill and humanity. Amen. 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 I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I'm sorry, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Charles, thank you so much for the invitation. I appreciate it. I want to thank Ms. Charles for the invocation. The clerk will call the roll of the members. President Young, Scott. Schleifer, Pinkett, President Young, Scott, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett Block, Rice and Costoso, Sneak Clark, Mr. President, we have a quorum. Um, thank you. Our showcase is council. Is, we have a showcase? Oh, okay. We move right along. This is the council custom generalized invocation. I ask for a motion to generalize the prayer. Motion by Councilman Dorsey, second by uh, Councilman Burnett. All in favor of generalized invocation say aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. We now move to. We will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of proceedings from the September 25th City Council meeting is on the council members' desk. Is there a motion to approve the journal? Motion by Councilman Dorsey, second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of adopting the journal, say aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion carried. The journal is adopted. Bill signed by the mayor can be found on page two to four of the agenda. Executive nomination. EA 17 0083, Rebecca Woods, member, Environmental Control Board, District 2. Uh, this has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 17 0084, Philip Lee, member, Environmental Control Board. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 17 0085, <laughs> Scott Richmond, member, Environmental Control Board, District 11. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 17 0086, Susan Francis, member, Commission on Aging and Retirement Education, District 3. This has been assigned to to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 17 0087, Barbara Cornman, Member, Commission for Aging and Retirement Education, District 14. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 17 0088, Aaron Murky, Member, Commission for Aging and Retirement Education, District 11. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 17 0089, Lloyd H. Buckner, Member, Commission for Aging and Retirement Education, District 14. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. Bills will be introduced. City Council Bill 17 0145, City Streets Opening, 8 Foot Alley, extending from the, east, from the east side of North Schroeder Street for the purpose of condemning and opening an 8 Foot Alley, extending easterly 76.5 feet, more or less, from the east side of North Schroeder Street to the east side of a 4 Foot Alley, as shown on Platt. 329A24 in the Office Department of Transportation providing for a special effective date. Sponsor City Council President on behalf of administration. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Bill 17-0146, City Streets Closing, 8-Foot Alley Extending from the East Side of North Schroeder Street for the purpose of condemning and closing an 8-Foot Alley Extending from Extending Easterly 76.5 feet, more or less, from the East Side of North Schroeder Street to the East Side of a 4-Foot Alley, shown on Platt 329 329A 24A in the Office Department of Transportation providing for a special effective date. Sponsor City Council President on behalf of administration. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Bill 17 0147, City Streets Opening, North Arch Street, a portion of Vine Street, and a portion of Ryman Court for the purpose of condemning and opening North Arch Street, extending from West Lexington Street, southerly 183, 183 feet 
to the south side of Vine Street, a portion of Vine Street extending from Pine Street easterly 441.93 feet to North Arch Street, and a portion of Ryman Court extending from North Arch Street easterly 101 feet, more or less, as shown on plat 345A19, and the Office Department of Transportation providing for special effects today. It's both City Council President on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council <coughs> Bill 17 0148, the sale of property, former beds of Water Street and Hollingsworth Street, for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore Cell. Headed to the public or private sale, all its interest in certain parcels of land known as the former bed of Water Street, extending from Grant Street easterly 157.3 feet, more or less, to South Calvert Street, and the former bed of Hollingsworth Street, extending, extending southerly 159.6 feet, more or less, to East Lombard Street and Albany Public Use, and providing for special effective days. Sponsor City Council President on behalf of Administration. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council <laughs> Bill 17-0149, rezoning 1401 Woodall Street and 1446 Stevenson Street for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 1401 Woodall Street and 1446 Stevenson Street as outlined read in the company plat from the I-1 Zoning District to the C-2 Zoning District. Sponsor Costello. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 17-0150, zoning prohibiting crude oil terminals for the purpose of prohibiting new or expanded crude oil terminals throughout Baltimore City, defining a certain term and general relating to crude oil terminals. Sponsored Clark, Reisner, Cohen, Henry Bullock, Pinkett, Dorsey, Middleton, Burnett, Sneed. Please note that uh, Councilman Robert Stokes is a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the City Council. My colleague uh, Edward Reisinger and I are happy to lead off on uh, a very important environmental issue here in Baltimore City. Um, we are all familiar with the travails of transporting crude oil through population centers. It is internationally known to be a hazard uh, when, and a volatile hazard traveling uh, the tracks of our nation. Uh, but we in the City Council do not have the power to regulate um, crude by oil, rail, crude by rail, but we um, do have land use uh, authority here and that's how we're approaching this issue. So this legislation is really three words. It says that at the very top of the list of prohibited uses in the new zoning code will be crude oil terminals. What this means is that those which exist can remain, and there are two, uh, they cannot expand, and new ones cannot be built or created here in Baltimore City if and when, with your help, this legislation is approved. This is a good time for this initiative because the price of oil is down and the crude oil trading and marketing is at a low. We would like to cap it at the current two terminals right now while the time is right and the demand is not high so that when that reverses itself, we will already have protected ourselves to the degree that we can from this crude oil traffic through Baltimore City. The terminal, the, the lack of new terminals will cap the traffic at what it is um, in the best of times now, but it will not encourage our tracks to become busier with that trade. So we thank you for co-sponsoring and we hope that you will continue with us as we try to get this land use change to the zoning code um, passed through the City Council and signed into law. Thank you. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 17-0151, rezoning 3310 Ridgewood Avenue for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 3310 Ridgewood Avenue as outlined in the red, as outlined in red in the company plat from the TOT2 Zoning District to the I-2 Zoning District, sponsored Middleton. This has been assigned to the Land Use Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 17-0152, food service facilities, healthy beverages for children's meals for the purpose of requiring food service facilities that offer beverages as a part of a children's meal to limit the beverage options being offered, defining children's meal, providing for a special effective date, and generally relating to healthy food options for children. Sponsor Scott, Costello, Dorsey, Burnett, Clark. Please note Councilman Henry is co-sponsor, Chair, recognize Councilman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the Council, Mr. President, 
Uh, this legislation was simply mirror what's happening in major restaurants across the city. If you look at McDonald's or most fast food restaurants or, or other major chain restaurants, what's happening is we understand the, the impact that we have had on children and with the diabetes, childhood obesity over the years while filling them up with sugary drinks. But what these restaurants have started to do is simply add in a healthy drink option with their kids menu. This legislation will only require any restaurant that has uh, a kids menu to offer a healthy drink option for, for those young people. Or you could just choose simply not to have a children's meal at all. There's no law that requires you to have a children's meal. You can just have a, have a, a, a menu that doesn't have that on there. So we are simply doing this, and I want to recognize the folks from Sugar Free Kids who we work with on this legislation, simply doing this for the health of our young people because we know that that above all is the most important thing for our city. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Judiciary Legislative Investigation Committee. City Council Bill 17-0153, food service facilities, on-premise postings, inspection reports, and suspension notices for the purpose of requiring certain inspection reports to be posted and maintained on food service facility premises, requiring the maintenance of posted suspension notices, defining certain terms, imposing certain civil penalties, and generally relating to regulation of food service facilities. Sponsor Scott Costello, Dorsey, Burnett, Clark. Please note that uh, Councilman Stokes is a co-sponsor. Chair recognize uh, Chairman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we know that uh, restaurant inspections is a topic that has been a, a focus of mine since my time here in the City Council. During the last term, we debated whether we were going to have restaurant grades. We were not able to do that. Uh, during that process, we heard from many restaurant owners about posting actual inspection reports, and then we followed up uh, with a piece of legislation that has took the city by storm. If you talk to myself or folks at the health department, one of the most popular things that has generated is our health closures that we all get every day because people are now amazed at what they can see when a restaurant is closed. They are amazed that they can go online to look at a restaurant's full inspection report, which for many years in Baltimore, even though it was paid for with their taxpayer dollars, they could not see. Well, if they can see it online, they should be able to see it at the restaurant. It's that simple. This is not a grading system. This is just the same restaurant inspection reports that are available online today will be available at each establishment. And we have to understand, especially in neighborhoods where they're consistently seeing these closures, when they're consistently having places that are operating in different ways, we should be open and transparent about what's happening. And we know that in neighborhoods in East and West Baltimore, they don't have access to the internet like some of us afford it. Every person doesn't have that access. So we, it's our duty as the city of Baltimore to honor all of the citizens and open up and be transparent in the way that all of them that can see. And that's what this would do. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Judiciary Legislative Investigation Committee. City Council Bill 17-0154, City Property, naming the building informally known as Miku Building to be Councilman Harry S. Cummings Building for the purpose of naming the building located at 401 East Fayette Street, informally known as the Miku Building, the Councilman Harry S. Cummings Building. Sponsor Costello, President Young, Scott, Henry Pinkett, Dorsey Burnett, Middleton, Stokes, Snead, Clark. Chair, please note, uh, Council, I'm um, Chairman Singer as a co-sponsor, um, Chairman Bullock as a co-sponsor, Chair recognized. Chairman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is the MeQ building, which is Kitty Corner to City Hall uh, at the southeast intersection of uh, Fayette and Holiday Street. Uh, the administration approached me a couple months ago um, and uh, very thankful to, the, uh, to Mayor Pugh and her team for working with me on uh, making sure we identified the right uh, person for this. Uh, Councilman Harry S. Cummings uh, was the first black elected official in Baltimore City. Uh, he lived and worked his entire life in the current 11th district. Um, he, he did a number of, of very important things uh, at a very difficult time in our history. Uh, one, he appointed the first black student uh, to uh, what was then, or the predecessor to MICA, uh, and had to fight that out in the court uh, because the school at the time was reluctant uh, to allow uh, that student in with the scholarship that he awarded uh, the student. Uh, he also was a founder of Colored Polytechnic School in 1892, uh, which many of us know today as Frederick Douglass High School uh, in Baltimore. And he's one of the first three black men to graduate from the University of Maryland uh, School of Law. Uh, probably most notably, uh, he was the first black person 
uh, to uh, second the nomination for president. Uh, he was a Republican, uh, and in 1904, uh, he uh, was the person who seconded the nomination for Teddy Roosevelt, who would go on to become president and return the favor by inviting him to the White House. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and colleagues, for your support, and look forward to a hearing. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. City Council Bill 17-0155, Zoning Condition Use Conversion of a Single Family Dwelling Unit to Two Dwelling Units in the R7 Zoning District, 2415 West Lexington Street. For the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the conversion of a single family dwelling into two dwelling units in the R7 Zoning District on the property known as 2415 West Lexington Street is outlined red in the company plat. Sponsor Bullock. This has been assigned to the Land Use Transportation Committee. Resolutions introduced. I'll uh, chair recognize um, Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to move to suspend the appropriate rules so that I can introduce a city council resolution from the floor. Second uh, by Councilman Scott. All those in favor suspend the rules to allow for the introduction of this resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The most incurred rules are suspended and the resolution can be introduced and will be city council resolution 17-0050R. The clerk will read the resolution and to the record. City Council Resolution 17-0050R, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, October 2017. For the purpose of recognizing October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, condemning all forms of intimate partner violence, and urging all Baltimoreans to support efforts to stop domestic violence and support domestic violence victims. Sponsor Middleton. Chair recognize um, Chairman Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. In conversations with Mayor Pugh and you, we thought it would be um, great just to uh, make sure that we had this awareness and urge all Baltimoreans to support efforts to stop domestic violence and support domestic violence victims. One in four women will be the victim of domestic violence at some point in her lifetime and on average three women are killed every day at the hands of a current or former intimate partner. Um, these victims need to know that they can safely seek assistance and that they will receive support and protection that they need so desperately. We in Baltimore have had um, many cases of just terrible violence with um, partners that have been um, murdered and abused and you know found it just um, horrific circumstances. The, um, I'm going to just quickly read some of the places that um, people are familiar with that you can go for help. And we just want to make sure and let uh, women know that there is help out there and people you can talk to. Uh, we have Turnaround Inc. On, uh, at 1800 North Charles Street. We have My Sister's Place Woman's Center on, uh, at 17 West Franklin Street. We have the B. Gaddy Family Center. We have Bond Secure Women's Resource Center at 10 North Pulaski Street. We have Marion House. We have the House of Ruth. Um, and then also, I'm uh, finally, I'm hosting, and that's next Monday on October 23rd, the, the Maryland Commission of Women. They're having a listening session from 6 to 8. Um, you can call my office for, for more information or um, register and please attend. It's a chance for women to just, discuss, just to have a discussion of all the concerns and needs that we have here in Baltimore City as women. So again, um, I want to thank you. You want to move for? And I'd like to move for uh, this bill to... Suspension of the rules and move. Suspend the rules to move the bill. Uh, second by uh, Councilwoman Clark. All, the, all those in favor of suspend the rules for immediate adoption of this resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carries the rules are suspended. I move the resolution. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of adopt the resolution 17 0050 R say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carries this resolution is adopted. Uh, you can find the can, <laughs> you can find the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion by Councilman Pickett, second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of approving the cons consent calendar, say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. 
The motion carried this consent calendar is approved. Chair recognize um, Chairman Bullock. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move to extend floor privileges to my special guest, uh, Mr. Keith Boussier. Uh, second by Councilman Scott. Um, all those in favor of extending floor privileges to Chairman Bullock's guests say aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carries and your guests may take the floor. I think everyone um, around here knows this man. Uh, whether you know him personally, um, you've seen him in our city streets. Um, many of you know that I'm a runner, and some of us yesterday, we were racing for the cure, and some of us will be running the marathon this weekend. But this is a man who runs every day um, throughout all of our neighborhoods. And as someone who represents West Baltimore, Harlem Park, and Sandtown, and places this man calls home, Mr. Bossier is really an inspiration. You are an inspiration to all of us. Uh, many of us feel like, like we know you. The fact that you run uh, rain, sleet, or snow, doesn't matter the, the, the weather, um, the distance, that you stay committed to it, and that this is really a way of life for you. And so when I told my colleagues and I told the president that we wanted to do this today, we were all in agreement that we wanted to honor you for the work that you do. Your, your commitment. You know, it, it means a lot to us because there are so many things that are happening in the world, and when there's someone who just exudes positivity throughout all the obstacles, all the challenges, the challenges that you face on a daily, daily basis, but it gives us all hope and inspiration for what's possible, and I know it makes me a better person, and it makes us all better people. So I wanted to make sure that we recognized you today. I want to read this. The City Council of Baltimore resolution, be it hereby known to all that the City Council of Baltimore offers its sincerest congratulations to Mr. Keith Boussier in recognition of your spirit that inspires Baltimore's neighborhoods. The entire membership extends its best wishes on this memorable occasion and directs its resolution presented on the 16th day of October, 2017. It's signed by our president, Bernard C. Jack Young, and myself. And we all are so happy for you, and we appreciate the work you're doing. Everybody want to take a picture with him or what? Sure. Why not? We see, we see you everywhere. It means a whole lot. When everybody gets in line, when everybody gets in place, then you can you have a couple things you like to say. It's your chance. All right. I think we get the picture. Um, All right, everybody, hold, hold, hold up. He's going to say a quick word first. Yeah. First of all, I would like to um, let you all know that inspiration is a two-way street, and that by the children looking up to me and being inspired by me, it makes me not want to disappoint them. Therefore, they have made a better person out of me. They have made me do what they, what they think is best. And by, by making, me a, making a better person out of me, they have brought out the best in me. And I hope that I too can bring out the best in them. Again, th thank you all. Thank, thank you for your commitment to our city, and thank you all for giving me this opportunity to honor someone who's so important to all of us. Let's give him another hand. Uh, we will now move the bills on second reader, executive appointments committee. 
EA 17-0062, Andre M. Davis, City Solicitor, Law Department, District 14. Chair, recognize Chairman Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee held hearings on September the 27th and October the 4th, 2017. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor confirm this nominee. Say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nominee is confirmed. EA 17-0063, Henry J. Raymond, Director, Finance Department, District 8. Chair recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilman um, Burnett. All those in favor confirm this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0064, Thomas J. Stosford, Director, Planning Department, District 14. Chair recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor confirm this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0065, Henry J. Raymond, Board of Directors, Parking Authority of Baltimore City, District 8. Chair, recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilman Burnett. All those in favor confirm this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0067, Juan J. Barber, member of Hispanic Commission. Chair, recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by uh, Councilman Burnett. All those in favor confirm this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0068, Marley Cardona Maz, member of Hispanic Commission, District 14. Chair recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor confirm this nominee, say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0069, Gabriel Cazares, member of Hispanic Commission, District 12. Chair recognize uh, Councilman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor confirm this nominee, say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0070, Fabiola Donato Galindo, member of Hispanic Commission, District 4. Chair, recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor confirming this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0071, Floyd Maria Guisti, member of Hispanic Commission, District 5. Chair, recognize uh, Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by uh, Councilman Slifer. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. EA 17-0077, Aaron N. Tamarcio, member, Civil Service Commission. Uh, Chair, recognize Chairman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. Second by um, Chairman, um, whose district is this? Oh, this is anybody. Oh, um, second by uh, Chairman Ross Singer. All those in favor confirm this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, this nomination is confirmed. Housing and Urban Affairs. City Council Bill 17-0108, Urban Renewal, Mount Washington, Mount Washington Village Business Area Amendment for the purpose of amending the Urban Renewal Plan for Mount Washington Village Business Area to modify the boundaries of the Renewal Plan, to delete certain provisions of the plan pertaining to powers of acquisition and condemnation made obsolete by Section 12. Dash 105.2 of the Real Property Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland to revise certain exhibits to reflect the boundary modifications of the plan and to reflect a change in zoning upon approval from separate ordinance for a portion of the property known as 1700 South Road and to delete a certain exhibit made obsolete by Section 12 dash 105.2 of the Real Property Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, waiving certain content and procedural requirements, making the provisions of this ordinance severable, providing for the application of this ordinance in conjunction with certain other ordinances, and providing for a special effective date. Chair, recognize Chairman Bullock. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the committee met on September 28th uh, to hear two matters. We'll be moving them both favorable with amendments. There are amendments on your desk. I move the amendments. Uh, by, um, Councilman Schleifer, all those in favor approving the amendments say aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. This bill is amended. Chair, recognize Chairman Bullock. I move <coughs> the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Schleifer. Um, all those in favor of approving this bill as amended say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reading. City Council Resolution 17-0034R, request for state action, set a strong nitrogen oxides limit for the wheel abrader Baltimore incinerator for the purpose of urging the Maryland Department of Environment to set a nitrogen oxides pollution limit for the wheel abrader Baltimore incinerator that is no higher than the 150 ppm standard on a 24-hour average that has been adopted by Connecticut and New Jersey and proposed in Massachusetts, or if at all possible, significantly lower than 150 ppm in order to provide maximum air quality benefits to residents of Baltimore. Chair, Chairman Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there are amendments on your desk. 
I move the amendment. Second by Chairman um, Ron Singer. All in favor of approving the amendment, say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. The resolution aye. is amended. Chairman I move the re resolution favorable is amended. Second by uh, Chairman Ron Singer. All those in favor of approving this resolution as amended, say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. <coughs> City Council Bill 17-0115, corrected Bill 2017 for the purpose of correcting certain technical errors and omissions in the City Code, repealing certain obsolete, obsolescent, or otherwise preemptive, superseded, or superfluous provisions, correcting, clarifying, and conforming related language, and, gen and providing for special effects of date. Chair, recognize Chairman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, I move the bill favorable. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of adopting this bill say aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is to approve this bill, moves to third reading. City Council Resolution 17-0042R, informational hearing, feral cats, for the purpose of requesting that representatives from the Health Department's Office of Animal Control appear before the City Council to discuss feral cats in Baltimore and whether the City's current approach to feral cats should be modified or remain the same. Chair, recognize Chairman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, we held a hearing on uh, September 26th uh, with representatives uh, from Barks. Uh, animal Control in the Health Department. It was a very educational uh, hearing. Uh, there are no changes that are going to be made uh, to this program moving forward. Uh, there are amendments on my colleague's desk. At this time, I'd like to move those amendments. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is approved. The resolution is amended. Chair recognized. Chairman Costello. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to move the bill favorably as amended. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of adopting this resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay, the most approved this resolution is adopted. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 17-0042, zoning condition use conversion of one dwelling to two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district, variance 2304 North Fulton Avenue. For the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the conversion of one dwelling into two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district on the property known as 2304 North Fulton Avenue is outlined in red in the company plat and granting a variance from certain off-street parking requirements. President Young, Scott Cohen, Dorsey, Henry, President Young, Scott, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett, Block, Rice, Aaron, Costello, Sox, Nee, Clark. Did you say pass? No. Oh, this bill is approved. City Council Bill 17-0109, rezoning a portion of 1700 South Road for the purpose of changing the zoning for a portion of the property known as 1700 South Road is outlined within the company plat from the R1D zoning district to the OR1 zoning district. President Young, Scott, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinky, Burnett, Block, Rassinger, Costello, Sox, and Clark. This bill is approved. Um, before we move the council, uh, committee announcement, I want to recognize Councilman Nick, Nicholas Diadamo, who have joined us today, former councilman. And Delegate uh, Bilal Ali, where did he go? Oh, he left. Okay. Committee announcement. Chair recognize Councilwoman Mid Chairman Middleton. Or should I say Vice President Middleton? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this, is a, this one is a re-announcement because um, we're going to have it televised. Uh, it's the Committee of the Whole, so that's everyone. Bill number 17-00. 20R on Thursday, November 19th. I'm sorry, November 9th, 2017. And again, it's going to be uh, televised. And if a, it's a, it's the oversight hearing for the private development incentives. Incentives. Um, the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee will hear City Council Bill 17-0126 on Thursday, November 16th, at 10 a.m here um, in council chambers. And uh, do we have to move for, I wanna move for suspension of rules 10-2 and 10-3. Second by Councilman, um, I mean, Councilman um, Burnett. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed nay, motion carried. And this is for the sale of property portion of the former bed of a four-foot alley extension from West Eager Street. Uh, also on Thursday, November 16th, we're gonna hear City Council Bill 17-0129 at 10.05 a.m. I'd like to suspend the rules, um, move to suspend the rules 10-2 and 10-3. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of suspend the rules announce the hearing say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. Chairman. Chairman, and, no, Chairman, um, 
Middleton. And this is for the sale of property for the former bed of a portion of a 10-foot alley lying between North Milton Avenue and Rose Street. Uh, also, Bill number 170131 on Thursday, November 16th at 1010. I'd like to move uh, for suspension of rules. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All in favor of suspended rules to announce the hearing say aye. Those opposed nay. Motion carried. Chair recognized Chairman Middleton. And this is for sale of property, former beds of Tawanda Avenue and a portion of Suffolk Avenue. Also, we're going to hear bill number 170140 on Thursday, November 16th at 1015 a.m. I'd like to move for suspension of the rules. Second by Council Rule 10-2. All those in favor of suspending the rules announce the hearing say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. Motion carried. Chair recognized Chair, Chairman um, Middleton. And this is for sale of property, the former beds of North Arch Street, Vine Street, and Riemann Court. And lastly, uh, Bill number 170148 on Thursday, November 16th, 10.20 a.m. I'd like to move for suspension of the rules 10.2 and 10.3. Second by Councilman Dorsey. All those in favor of suspending the rules announce the hearing say aye. aye. All opposed nay, the motion carried. Chair recognized Chairman Middleton. And this is for sale of property, former beds of Water Street and Hollinsworth Street. And that's it. Any more committee announcements? Committee announcements. Chair recognizes Councilor Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Budget and Appropriations Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, November 14th at 2 p.m. on Resolution 17-0003R. Uh, this is quarterly budget briefings uh, with the Bureau of Budget and Management Research. Uh, also on uh, that same date, Tuesday, November 14th at 2.05 p.m., Budget and Appropriations Committee will hold a hearing on 17-0004R, uh, and that's budget oversight, quarterly budget oversight for Baltimore City Public Schools. At both of these hearings, we will do uh, closeout for uh, fiscal year uh, 2017, as well as quarter one of fiscal year 2018. I just wanted to thank, uh, uh, take a moment to thank my colleague, Councilman Bullock, um, who helped us resolve a problem that we've had on the council, uh, difficulties in scheduling these hearings with uh, Baltimore City Public Schools because that is the same day that they have uh, their uh, board meetings. Uh, so there were um, uh, a litany of dates that did not work for them. So thank you, Councilman Bullock, for working with me to switch our dates for uh, starting in 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilman Chairman Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. Executive Appointments Committee is scheduled to hold a hearing on Wednesday, October the 18th, beginning at 10 a.m for the recent nominations to serve as a member of the Hispanic Committee. Uh, she is EA 17-0066, Elizabeth Alex member. The Executive Appointments Committee scheduled her hearing on October the 25th, beginning at 10 a.m. for the nominations to serve as members of the Environmental Control Board. There are three additional nominations for this board, and the committee will be adding them to the schedule on the 25th. They are Rebecca Woods, Director, Philip Lee, and Scott Richmond, members. Uh, the Zeck appointments will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, November the 1st, beginning at 10 a.m. to review the following nominations. Commission for Aging and Retirement Education Care Member, Susan Francis, Barbara Corman, Aaron Murky, and Lloyd H. Buckner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee now, Chair recognize Chairman Ron Singer. President, uh, the Land Use and Transportation Committee will hold a hearing on Bill 17-0107 on Wednesday, November 15th at 1 p.m. in the Council Chambers. This is a zoning, it's a conditional use retail goods establishment located at 3601 through 3605 Park Heights Avenue. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Chair recognize, you, got, you have one? Chair recognize, uh, committee hearing? Committee announcement? Okay. Chair recognize Chairman Sneak. 
Thank you. The Labor Committee, I just want to remind everyone, because this is an important one, that um, the legislative oversight hearing on Thursday, October the 19th, um, beginning at 1 p.m. here in the Council Chambers for the purpose of requesting that the Department of Finance, Department of Human Resources, the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, the Employees Retirement System, the Fire and Police Employees Retirement System, and the Labor Commissioner brief the City Council on the scheduled 2020 termination of prescription drug coverage for all Baltimore City employees. So please remember Remember that. Thank you. Um, Chair recognize Councilwoman, you have a committee announcement? No, Mr. President, I think we may have been working things out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Councilwoman. Silence Chair is golden. <laughs> Chair, <laughs> Chair, <laughs> Chair recognize uh, Chairman Boulat. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We have a number of hearings scheduled for the um, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. Uh, first on Thursday, um, October 26th at 1.50 p.m., uh, we'll be hearing uh, 0123, which is the franchise Bridgeway over Linden Avenue. We also have some hearings on Friday, November 3rd, which is outside of our normal time. The first one at 1.50 uh, p.m. is going to be the Baltimore uh, City Landmark Exteriors Chick Webb Recreation Center. Following that at 2 p.m. will be um, an informational hearing that we'll be holding on the MTA's implementation on Baltimore Link. Then on November 26th at 2.05 p.m., we will be hearing Bill 0037, which is City, uh, City Street's opening, Eager Street, and 10-Foot Alley. That is Thursday, November 16th. Also on the 16th um, at 2.06 p.m., we'll be hearing City Street's closing, Eager Street and 10-Foot Alley. 2.10 p.m. that same day, we'll be hearing Bill 0039, which is City Street's closing, um, North Bond Street, East North Avenue, Broadway, and East Lafayette Avenue. 2.15 p.m. that day, we'll be having uh, Bill 0057, uh, City Street's closing, two-foot alleys bounded by East 20th Street, Chester Street, North Avenue, and North Castle. That same day, we will have uh, 216 City Street's closing portion of West 26th Street. That is 0058. 2.20 p.m. that same day, we'll be having Bill 0124, City Street's opening portion of Four Foot Alley for West Eager Street. Working me. Uh, and also on that same day at 2.20 uh, p.m., we'll have City Street's closing Four Foot Alley for East West East Street, Eager Street. Followed uh, at 2.25 p.m. by the opening of Water Street and Hollinsworth Street. And lastly, we'll be having uh, Bill 0133 say she's closing Water Street and Hollinsworth Street. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I said you working. <laughs> okay, we're on regular announcements. I want to uh, wish um, Councilman Pinkett um, a happy birthday. His birthday is coming up October the 21st. So let's give him a hand. I would, I would, I would ask the council glee club to sing happy birthday, but I don't think we practiced today. <laughs> also, um, I want to wish a, a very happy birthday to our chief clerk, Liam Davis, um, who is celebrating the birthday today. Um, I want to include Raymond Davison and the victims of the mass shooting in Las Vegas in the moment of silence. And I want to recognize Ms. Barbara Jackson. Um, it's the first time I saw you in a, a meeting that I've chaired, so I want to welcome you here. And I see um, Miss Angie Smith in the back. Um, you know, she had that Restoring the Village project. I want to welcome you to City Hall. Okay. <laughs> Chair recognize Councilman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. As you know, Ms. Jackson is my personal community association president, so I always a good thing to see Ms. Jackson. And you left out the most important thing about Angie. Uh, she's a graduate of Mervo High School, oh, sir, God. so thank you. She's the president of the PTA. President of the PTA. President of the PTA. <laughs> but uh, on a more somber note, I would like to ask uh, Councilman Middleton to honor a moment of silence for the now 283 uh, victims of homicide in the city of Baltimore. Uh, Mr. President, as you know, I spent the end of last week in Louisville, Kentucky uh, with leaders from cities around the country, specifically talking about one thing, and that's how can cities do better for the achievement of 
men and boys of color. And out of these 283, we know that the overwhelming majority of them are men and boys of color. So Baltimore must do better. I could stand up here and say that we need to change our strategy, but we all know that. But what we have to do now is look within and see how can we further that mission? How can we reach those people so that next year we're not having this conversation about 283 people, 283 families, 283 communities that are suffering with this trauma. Also, I think it's very important that I mentioned that 49 years ago today, there were some gentlemen who won the Olympics, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, who decided to do a protest during the national anthem. And we know that they were basically ran out of their sport, unappreciated, called everything but a child of God by most people in America. And I think it's a shame that 49 years later, we're still having the same debate about the same topic in America, about how America treats black people. And people are still treating athletes wrong for simply doing the most American thing that you can possibly do, and that is to peacefully protest. Also, i like to add, Mr. President, that 51 years ago yesterday, uh, Bobby Seale and Huey P. Newton created the Black Panther Party. So those are two things that I think are, are very relevant in the time that we're living in, especially when we, we see what's happening in our country every day. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognize um, Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Um, I'm not going to be here for the next city council meeting, so you won't have to listen to me talk about art stuff uh, in the next one. I'll be at Chicago, uh, in Chicago for the NACTO conference there. Uh, but for uh, now and up to the next city council meeting, I'll tell you about a couple of things going on in the arts. Uh, first, this Friday at Red Emma's at 7.30, it's African Storytelling and Music Night. Um, Red Emma's, of course, up on North Avenue. Um, on Friday the 27th, next Friday, uh, full disclosure, my partner, Aaron Fostel, has an opening uh, called the, A Measure of Place of a solo exhibition at the Creative Alliance. And the next day, um, Brandon's reading my mind, by the way. Uh, the next day, the same day, 6.30 p.m., the Baltimore Youth Arts is holding their first annual art auction and Halloween fundraiser. Um, I don't know where that's happening, uh, but you can look up Baltimore Youth Arts because I hope everybody here uh, makes a little effort to understand what Baltimore Youth Arts is about. Um, the, uh, I want to express some somber th uh, feelings about the resignation of Gary Thomas, um, probably the uh, world's greatest tenor saxophonist, a Cherry Hill native uh, who played uh, in his early years, uh, 19, 20 years old, in Miles Davis's band uh, and has chosen to live his entire life here in Baltimore City rather than migrating to New York City or other centers of jazz. This is a man who, when Herbie Hancock needs somebody to play the gig with him in Tokyo over the weekend, this is the man he calls, and he is right here in Baltimore. And having been the chair of the jazz department at my alma mater, um, the Peabody Institute of the Johns Hopkins University, he has resigned that position under um, uh, rather unfortunate circumstances. Um, lastly, on a very, very positive note for Baltimore City, um, uh, several months ago I went to dinner at a friend's house who at that time was living at the Creative Alliance and she informed me and some friends that she had uh, just the previous day been to the White House uh, and uh, an invitation she was very surprised to get to meet with the then, um, as I guess it was more than a few months ago now, the then president and first lady. Um, and uh, you must, uh, many of you have seen by now the announcement that uh, as a result of that meeting, she's been commissioned a Baltimore artist to, to paint the portrait of former first lady Michelle Obama, who in my mind is still the first lady. Thank you. Chair recognize um, Councilman Stokes. President, um, the Chick Webb Memorial Rec Center, first of all, I want to thank my colleagues for supporting me on that um, resolution. Um, having an open house November the 17th through the 19th of 2017, and Friday, November the 17th from 3 to 7, they're going to be featuring the Dunbar Jazz Band, and there will be guest speakers, light refreshments, and on Saturday, November the 18th from 6 to 11, Harlem to 
President Cabaret and the, the jazz band. And Sunday, you're going to have worship service at the Waters African American Church at 417 East Fed Street. Thank you. Thank you. I'll chair recognize uh, Chairman Sneed. I just want to thank you. On your way out, guys, if you um, see some masks on your way out and when you're coming in in the foyer, um, it's to, it's uh, about addiction and stories of recovery. So I just ask that you um, take a look at those masks and read the story because um, we keep seeing the articles in the Baltimore Sun talking about you know folks overdosing and you know we want to save lives. So just take a look at those masks and read about their stories. They're also going to have something on Wednesday, October the 18th, right here in City Hall um, to tell more about the stories of folks who um, who have recovered from addiction. So thank you. Thank you. And um, on the last note before I call the Vice President of the Council, um, we're all in this council concerned about the murders and the crime that's plaguing our city. Um, and our officers are working short, and I know that they fatigue, so I'm calling upon the FOP and the administration to get together and let's get this done. Because we know that in order to reduce crime, we have to get these officers on the street. So it's all about the schedule and who's going to control the schedule. But I don't care about any of that. We want to see more police officers on the street of Baltimore. And we got to make sure that the FOP and administration work tirelessly to make this thing happen. Because the longer these negotiations goes on, more crime is, is running rampant in our city. And, you know, we're, we're sick and tired of it. I know I'm sick and tired of it. I had two murders right around my home, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm livid, you know, just like anybody else in this city that see all the murders all over the city of Baltimore. Enough is enough. I mean, the majority of us are law-abiding citizens, and we let the 2% dictate to us what happens in our neighborhoods and in our city. We need to start flipping the script, and when you see something, you say something. You tell something. The only way we're going to get out of this is if people stop being afraid to tell who's doing the killings and the murders. I have three nephews. None of their killers have been caught to date, and people know who did it. And I'm quite sure that's the story of many people in the city of Baltimore. Until it hit home, then you feel like everybody else feels. You want somebody to tell. So I'm just encouraging the FOP, if you're listening, to come back to the table, I'm not saying you walked away or anything of that nature, and come and sit down with the administration so we can get this thing done. Because it's all about fighting crime in the city of Baltimore, and we're tired of our districts being short. They can't cover the city with seven and eight officers. Chair recognize um, Vice President Middleton for adjournment. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I do the next step, I'd just like to congratulate uh, Dana M. Middleton, that was, has been appointed as a uh, Baltimore City uh, Circuit Court judge. She formerly worked in the Attorney's General Office, and um, I just wanted to give her personal congratulations. Again, that's Dana M. Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, October 30th, 2017. And we're going to have a moment of silence for Raymond uh, Davidson and the victims of the mass shooting, shootings in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, we're also going to have a moment of silence for the, and sorry to say this number just keeps growing, 283 victims and the, of violence and their families. Thank you. There being no further business, this concludes the 20th meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council. Good night.